All right, boys and girls, today we're doing a full fish cave tour of all the tanks in the garage, raw and uncut. That's right, I'm not gonna edit anything. I'm not gonna put in any B-roll footage. I'm not gonna clean up the garage. I got towels and crap everywhere. Don't ask me why I picked today of all days to do this because literally tomorrow I wanna clean up the garage. So um, let's get started with the 125 over here. This is a uh, big Red Devil cichlid. Haven't had a chance to show off this tank in a while. Um, you guys know me, I'm not a big um, South American cichlid, Central American cichlid, but I got this guy in a tank, oh, six months ago now, and um, he's grown on me. He's got a pretty big personality, you know, compared to a lot of the other fish I keep. So wasn't planning on keeping him, but I had this open 125. Um, he's in here with a, a pike cichlid, a South American pike cichlid. There's a few really large fire mouths, um, but he by far runs the tank. Definitely the tank boss. Um, if you take a look in here, there's some pretty big pieces of Anubius. I lucked out. These are probably my favorite scores of all the kind of tanks and stuff that I've bought and used. And... Um, I've gotten in deals and fish and whatever. To be honest, I think these big pieces of Anubius are some of my favorite scores. This one was actually attached to this. And then this one is brand new. I don't think you guys have seen this one yet, but I picked this up in a tank. Um, I did film the, um, you know, the tank trip of me getting it, so I'll probably release that. But, I mean, you just can't find Anubius this big or this thick in a store. And if, you know, and if you did, I don't know what the price would be, but I wouldn't be buying it. Uh, there's, the, there's the Pike Cichlid. But um, one of these days, I'll do a deeper dive into this tank. Let's keep it moving. Jump to the rack system over here. The first tank is a, a 10-gallon tank. You'll notice it's home to, to Carl Arbeta, who's hiding in there. I also recently added a few uh, Celestial Pearl Danios. If you guys have been following, I definitely want to um, breed these guys. There's two in here, and then there's a, a handful more in quarantine across the way. But this tank has been set up probably the longest I actually had this 10 gallon tank set up when it was still across the way and then I kind of uh, drained it halfway and moved it over here. So this is definitely the oldest tank and um, you know the plants seem to do the best in it and it's got a, a dirted bottom. Next tank over is a, uh, a blue shrimp tank and the blue shrimp in here are doing alright. This is like the original blue shrimp tank. I didn't clean the glass. I didn't do anything for this, guys. This is totally raw, so I apologize um, for the, the dirty tanks, but this is just how it's going to be this time. And as you can see here, the blue shrimp are doing good in here. There's also a bunch of assassin snails. This tank is definitely my um, assassin snail breeding grounds. As you can see, the blue little tiny blue shrimp. So they're still breeding in here. And the, this is the assassin snail, uh, the graveyard of, of ram's horn snails that they've, uh, they've taken out. But uh, if we keep it moving... This is another uh, shrimp and snail tank, but we also have some of these L144 uh, lemonide bristlenose plecos. They're still uh, babies, so I'm not really sure if they're male or female yet, but there's, uh, I think, four or five in here. I'm really looking forward to growing these out. Um, the ram's horn snails are kind of blowing up in here. I've been feeding ram's horn snails out of this tank to the pea puffers, which we're going to take a look at in a second. Um, this tank is also home to some really greedy Amano shrimp. Drop a comment down below. You guys have a mono shrimp. Are they the greediest thing you guys keep? I know that there's some African cichlids and stuff out there that are pretty, you know, food hungry. But to me, whenever I drop a wafer or something in here, these are mono shrimp are, to me, like the freaking, are like the, uh, the kings of greed. We're going to keep it moving to the 20-gallon uh, long. This is why I usually edit. But essentially, guys, if you're new here, this rack system has 16 tanks. So there's uh, eight 10-gallons over here. 820 gallons over here so we're going across the top we went 10 gallon 10 gallon 20 long and then this 20 long is uh some dwarf praycox rainbow fish big shout out to my guy tom at team aquatics looks like that's a female right there i got a lot of males but uh, the the males have the red tail and the the females have that kind of yellowish orange but my boy tom over at team aquatics shipped these to me as eggs in the mail and it's probably one of my favorite experiments. Like, you know, they're fish. I get it, you know, but I got them as eggs and I hatched them out and I'm growing them up. So I think it's pretty cool. Um, some of these plants you see floating here, um, these are actually for the winner of a contest we just had, along with these uh, Java, not Java moss, uh, Christmas moss ledges. So that's why they're kind of just floating in this tank. But main goal for this tank is to grow up these rainbow fish. There's also some, uh, some guppies. These are some steel nebula guppies that I'm growing out. 
Not sure if we're going to breed them yet, but I kind of like them, holding on to them for now. Um, we dropped down one level. We got the yellow shrimp tank. Now, I'm really excited to notice that um, one of this yellow shrimp is buried right there. Just noticed that the other day. Um, the yellow shrimp have been like the worst shrimp for me. Um, I kind of almost lost my whole colony. Luckily, I had a few outside in the tubs, so I brought them uh, back inside. But this tank, as far as the vegetation and the plants, doing pretty good. Got a few different crypts. I believe that's Crypt Parva and um, some Anubius. Uh, Java fern back there. It's the Windelof variety, which means it has a little frizzy stuff. And, um, oh, yeah, actually, maybe you guys can help me out here. On this wood, there's a little mites. I'm not sure if those are water mites or... Um, scuds or, or what they are but if you have an idea of what they are let me know because I think if they're scuds or something I want to get a culture going of them they don't seem to be harming the shrimp but uh, I really don't know what they are so drop a comment down below if you can help me out with that moving over to the left here we have a tank full of uh, harlequin rasboras or um, lamb chop pork chop rasboras as you can see by the the black shape there nice little lamb chop and then we also got the cardinal tetras. There's a nice group of fat cardinal tetras in here. And we have a few panicories. These are the two panicories that I got originally. And kind of like the CPDs, I got a few more, actually um, I think it's 10 or a dozen more, waiting to join these guys. So my goal for this tank in the near future is gonna be to add some more panicories and um, just really kind of um, keep the plants going here. The dwarf, Sag the dwarf Sagittarius is doing really good in here. And as you can see, I've been trying some different stem plants, just kind of sticking them in here and um, seeing, seeing if they work. You can also notice um, some assassin snails. There's assassin snails in almost all my tanks now, which is fine by me, but most of my tanks have snails of some variety. Uh, if we keep it moving over here, speaking of snails, there's a different looking snail. There's a, a rabbit snail. We got a, a few rabbit snails around here. Um, shout out to my, my local fish friend, Chris, who hooked me up with one big rabbit snail and a few babies. And I think she's, she or he's popped out a few more. If you guys aren't familiar with the rabbit snails, they don't really breed as quickly as, um, you know, Malaysian trumpet snails. You'll probably thousands of Malaysian trumpet snails and ramshorn snails in this tank and only a few of these rabbit snails. But these rabbit snails get a really big size. And this one's like kind of a yellowish variety, but that foot comes in like green, orange, really different kind of cool, unique, um, unique colors. Um, also in here is some, uh, some cherry shrimp. Um, kind of scroll back there or zoom in back there. You see there's some cherry shrimp. Not a ton, I just got a new line. Um, so I got just like, I think there was eight. So I just wanted to kind of put a new fresh line of uh, red shrimp. So I got them in this tank for now. Speaking of red shrimp, this is one of my oldest lines of red shrimp. And that's a pretty, uh, looks like an old, old mama right there. Nice and, uh, you know, dark, full grown. But in this tank, we've got, uh, you know, a decent little population of cherry shrimp in here. Nothing too special. But once again, you know, crypts, which are one of my favorite plants, simply because they don't need a lot of, um, a lot of light or a lot of fertilizer. So crypts tend to do well for me. And I like the, you know, you can find some different varieties of crypts. Speaking I'm really good at this transition stuff, huh? Speaking of crypts, um, we got some pink flamingo crypt down here. Um, shout out to uh, Madfish Diva. We got, I'm going to show some uh, Hillstream loaches off in a minute, and she has some of those. But I also know she has some of this uh, pink flamingo crypt. So if you're watching, uh, Diva, let me know how your pink flamingo crypts are doing. We got the um, pea puffers in here. These guys are really fun to watch. I find myself, um, when I come out here, and I'll, I'll pop in this chair right here, and I'll just sit you know, watch different tanks. This is definitely one of the tanks that I find myself kind of glued to more often than not. Just, I think it's just because the way these guys kind of move. Um, I really want to, you know, turn the fish room, the fish cave into more and more breeding. But these are one of the species that I may keep that, um, you can breed them, but I'm not really, my goal is not to breed them, but I just, I just like them, they're just cool. So if you guys don't have any pea puffers, definitely, you know, look into it. As you can see, there's plenty of ramshorn snails. I also feed a bunch of, uh, live blackworms for these guys as well. If we slide over one more, I've had these guys, but you haven't seen them in a while. And these are the, uh, the dwarf Mexican crayfish. So this orange, also called like a CPO. So I got, I think there's six in here. I don't know, there's a little colony I'm trying to breed. There's also some orange shrimp. 
Looks like this guy uh, lost both his claws. Um, there's, there's a plenty of hiding spots in here. You can see one back there. These guys are known as kind of the more peaceful crayfish, but crayfish are still pretty territorial. Um, haven't seen any buried females yet, but um, uh, I, just re I just relocated them here to this tank, so I'm hoping that kind of uh, prompts, prompts some breeding behavior. Um, keeping in the theme with orange crustaceans, or are they crustaceans? I don't know. Orange, orange stuff. Uh, <laughs> we got orange shrimp. Now, we showed up this tank a little while ago. It's still doing really well. Haven't seen a ton of little baby shrimp, but I'm still seeing quite a few buried females, and you know the population seems to be doing really well. There's a very female, a few berry, actually two berry females right there. So I'm hoping this this uh, this tank is definitely on the brink of explosion, and I think it's doing pretty good as far as plants as well. This uh, Anubius nan on this driftwood has really kind of doubled or tripled in size since I got it. These other Anubiuses are doing well. And in most of my tanks with the dirt, the dwarf sag is really kind of, you know, taken over. And you can see it kind of, you know, shooting these runners, which is cool to me to look at. I really like looking at the front of these tanks and seeing the root systems. It's just cool to me. Over here, we got some African cichlids. These guys are a um, Neolamprologus, oh gosh, pulcher, I think it is. And these guys are the daffodil cichlid. There's a group in here that are just about sexually mature. So... I'm hoping to breed these guys soon. Um, I haven't set up any kind of uh, grow out system. If you guys know, the, the plan is to set up a grow out system over here. And I really don't want to kind of have a bunch of fry from different things if I'm not ready for them. So pretty soon here, I'm going to try to get these guys breeding. But I've just been feeding regular stuff, not going too crazy. Um, but I want to start ramping up the meteor foods and the live foods to hopefully kind of spark some breeding behavior um, in the next few months once I'm prepared. I'm gonna drop down the floor now and check out the bottom tanks. Let's see if I can get this, there we go. And uh, we got some cherry shrimp down here. This is probably my main cherry shrimp tank right now where I got you know a good amount growing, just trying to cull it actively. I don't claim to have the, the straightest lines or the purest award-winning lines, but you can see there's a ton of little baby shrimps on the glass here. All those little dots are baby shrimp. So they're pretty prolific. I got to take that one orange one out. Every once in a while, we get some oranges or some really kind of clear culls, and I try to wean those out. But the, uh, the tank is doing pretty good. This one's kind of cool because this was the last tank I had set up in the rack system. When I was moving stuff over, I kind of just threw everything extra into here. That I, I was sorting out stuff, and I just threw it in here. That's why the substrate just looks like mud, because it's pretty much just a mix of whatever was there. And it turns out that there's a few shrimp and a few snails that had kind of made it in here. And I hadn't fed the tank or anything. And it was, you know, I was working on all the other tanks. And it came back months later. And holy crap, there was a bunch of shrimp in here that had survived and populated. So cherry shrimp are one of my favorites for that reason. And then these Amazon swords. These are the only Amazon swords I have. And I really wasn't expecting them to do so well in here because they just stuck them in here. But... Um, yeah, they're doing awesome. I think I'm going to move one of these out soon and put in a bigger 75-gallon so I can really appreciate it more because, as you can see, they're already starting to grow out of this 20-gallon uh, this long, and they were never meant to be, you know, this is never meant to be their permanent home anyway. Like I said, this tank a year ago was still kind of set up, and I never really truly set it up. Um, we keep it moving over here. We just kind of spotlighted this tank the other day, but I want to show it off anyway on all these blue and opal mystery snails. Big shout out to Madfish Diva again. Instead of calling these guys white or ivory, uh, which you know I guess would be acceptable. I think opal's a cool name. So we got some blue and opal mystery snails here with some of these blue, uh, blue cherry shrimp. There's a good amount. You know, like I said, they're a varying degree of blue, I guess you could say. Um, and some of them come out really. Some of them come out black. Once again, not claiming to have the straightest line of shrimp. But in my opinion, next to the red shrimp, these blues are my favorite color over the orange and the, uh, and the yellow even. The blues just are really cool. We're going to keep it over, keep moving over here and take a look at this next, back to 10-gallon tanks again. And um, first and foremost, this is, I believe, a, a tiger lily. So I talked about dwarf aquarium lilies and how they're a cool kind of low-light plant that's red. 
Well, if you look at this tiger lily and this pattern on it, it is really cool. Um, I've had this thing for a while and just recently did it really start to kind of take off. And if you like a dwarf aquarium lily, then you're going to love the tiger lily because you get this kind of really cool tiger pattern on the leaf. Um, as far as the inhabitants of this tank, besides all the duckweed that is even stuck to the sponge filter, I mean, it's, it's yeah, there's duckweed. Oops. Oh, no editing. I don't care. That's staying in. Um, there's no, there's, there's a duckweed covering the whole top, but there's a bunch of just mixed shrimp in here. This is my attempt at like a, an LRB Skittles tank where there's some dark shrimp, some light shrimp, some more cull colors, yellows, browns, wilds, just a little mix of everything in here. So I'm just letting it, letting it go. No kind of uh, set plans really, just kind of see what happens and seeing what spits out. We move over here, the last tank in the rack system. There's nothing really going on in here. There was a few cull shrimp. I got it kind of cleaned out because we're gonna move some fish into here soon. And let's go show you guys what fish those are gonna be. Uh, before that though, actually, while we're here doing an uncut thing, yeah, there's a rug I'm getting rid of that I didn't throw out for trash yet. Um, this tank is a really cool find that actually Mrs. Lucky Smuck found on a, um, at a garage sale. It's really old school. It's about, uh, about a, I think it was like a 20 gallon tank or something, but it's like super tall and super thin. As you can see, it's really narrow. And it came with these really old school in the box power filter. I haven't got it to work yet. It's brand new in the box, but from like 1980, I found this, <laughs> I found this, um, what is this? The power jet, Marine Land Penguin Power Jet. Okay, and where is it? The date on this sucker is 19, See if it focuses. Hold on. This was, oh, that's my feet. The date on this sucker is 1989. I can show this to you guys. Yeah, I think that's focusing. But yeah, I thought that was really cool. Yeah, I knew the stuff was old because the heater, look at these heaters, guys. Look at the plugs. I mean, that's an old plug. But that's a really cool find. Look at this. I'm probably not going to open this. Some poly filter the incomparable poly filter once again probably from the late 80s maybe um 90s any local people here maybe local central florida aquarium concepts was that an old store i don't know let me know in the comments down below but just pretty cool stuff all these lights that's my project for the weekend i'm going to go through all these extra lights see what works see what bulbs work see what fixtures work kind of go through that um and then over here we lost the lights let me go turn the lights back on before uh, <laughs> before the tour got here, we lost the lights. All right, there we go. So the fish, the fish that are going that empty 10 gallon, and it won't be their permanent home, but these yellow uh, Lelupe, Lake Tanganyika and Lelupe cichlids, um, they're gonna need um, a much bigger tank eventually. I'm probably gonna put them in a 75, but um, this 10 gallon quarantine tank they're in with these clown loaches is getting cramped. Um, there's actually, I went back to the farm. If you guys have been watching Bio Aquatics Farm, it's about, it's about two hours away from me. I wish it was closer or else I'd be there every freaking weekend. Um, <laughs> but uh, I picked up some more clown loaches, some more baby clown loaches. So we got the, got the uh, herd up to a dozen and I'm really excited to grow these guys out. It's a fish that, I mean, obviously it's not a rare fish. People know about clown loaches. It's one of the most popular fish. Um, but until I had some, I don't really think I appreciated them as much as I do now. Um, big shout out to uh, Ron over at Friday Fish Facts and my local fish friend here, Rob, they're both big loach guys. And um, even though I've been watching them appreciate loaches for some reason, it just never clicked until recently. Uh, speaking about loaches, I love these transitions. Speaking about loaches, we got some Hillstream loaches in this tank. Now this tank was kind of been a catch-all. You notice this rainbow fish, I believe, I've been trying to treat this, and my, my, my fish friend told me he thinks it's like a, a tumor or something. So I don't really know. Let me know down below. I've heard that it's like incurable. I got to let it ride out. But literally this fish has had this for six months now and I've tried everything. Um, but I don't know everything. So let me know. Um, this tank, it's, it does need to be water change day is tomorrow, but it's this, all this algae on the front of the glass that's really making it bad. And I haven't really scraped algae on this tank on purpose because I just, I don't really care. I want um, these Hillstream loaches to have as much algae available as possible um, this tank is 
really overstocked right now and I got to, I have to move some stuff out of here. This albino rainbow shark is, I'm gonna rehome. He's just in here um, very, very temporarily as well as this uh, these school of albino quarries are moving out. I'm gonna keep these Colombian tetras. These Colombian tetras are really growing on me. They're starting to color up a little better. Um, if you guys have been following me for a while, African butterfly fish, I had a pair and actually even some fry that used to be in that top tank. Unfortunately, I lost all the fry and the female. I'm not really sure why. Uh, it's, it, was really, it really sucks. I mean, obviously, if you guys are fish keepers, you've probably lost fish before. Um, but yeah, it, just, it was just kind of, I lost the fry, and then two days later, the, the female was just in the tank dead, and you know, I did test the water, no, no issues with the water. Um, so yeah, not really sure. I, I got them you know, from a used tank a while ago, so it could have been old age, but I usually just, you know, I, it was probably me. <laughs> Nine times out of 10, it's, it's the fish keeper, not the fish. But, um, but yeah, you live and you learn, and like I said, I, I may try to get another female and, and uh, breed them again because that was really cool, and I was kind of looking forward to, I was looking forward to growing them up. Um, this is the first time I've really showed this uh, piece of wood off, I think, in the tank with the java fern on it. Um, obviously, it's got to fill out, but I kind of set this up, and I really, look, I really like how it, it turned out. I also have some of these um, calico bristlenose plecos in here. I'm not even sure. I haven't really looked. There may be eggs in there. Um, they're definitely a breeding age. I saw a pretty gravid female, it looked like. So there could be some calico bristlenose eggs. Uh, but the main goal for this tank is going to be um, these, these Colombian tetras are staying, the hillstream loaches. I'm going to try to turn this into like a hillstream loach breeding tank. I think that's my, my main focus for this tank. And some of the other fish, like I said, are going to find homes elsewhere in the fish cave or with local fish friends. Keeping it moving, another quarantine tank. This is just a five gallon quarantine tank with some fish I touched upon earlier. These are the other CPDs that are gonna go into that 10 gallon tank and hopefully breed these guys. And then also this is the, the herd of Corydoras that is gonna to join the other two panda Corys um, across the way in that 20 long. And the goal will be to, to breed these guys eventually as well. So they've been in quarantine now for a little over two weeks, almost three weeks now. So they'll be moving out soon. And then this, if you guys have been following me, that's the, the live black worm culture. So that's still going strong. I had two cultures, but I needed space for QT. So I, I have all the black worms in there now. But I guess that wraps it up. We'll see how that went raw and uncut. I appreciate you guys sticking with me. Um, like I said in the last video, I got some really cool stuff, some really cool tours planned. Um, really excited. Just opportunities that are opening up. Um, so looking forward to bringing that stuff to you guys. Thank you guys for the support. As always, stay positive and stay passionate.